Good morning and welcome back to the homestead. Well, this morning is a lot quieter than it was yesterday. Yesterday we woke up to a major windstorm coming through and uh, nasty high winds that did some pretty good damage around here. Uh, we are without power, so I look a little disheveled and messy and eh, because I am. <laughs> um, today is Friday. And um, we actually had a storm come through on Wednesday as well, and that took out a bunch of people's power lines and stuff. And um, so it's estimated that we may not get power until uh, Sunday, probably at the earliest, possibly Monday. So we've got a couple of days that we've got to deal with this. So the last time that we lost power like this and, a lot, and had power outage for several days I think it was almost a week uh, I determined that I was not going to be caught as unprepared so one of the things that um, we had to deal with was seven people in one bathroom and as you can imagine what that's like it was not pleasant so um, we get our laundry soap in you know some pretty big gallon jugs or two gallon jugs I'm not sure what they are um, and I've been taking those and kind of rinsing them out and uh, filling them up with water and putting them in our basement so that uh, when we do lose power like we are right now, we can at least flush the toilet. Um, I've got it. I didn't get enough as many as I would like to get filled yet. I'd like to get about 12 of them filled so we can at least maybe um, try to... Uh, Try to um, flush a toilet at least maybe twice a day, but for right now, at least it's once a day, so it's not as bad as it was uh, when we had we couldn't do it at all. Um, so that is something that I, I have gotten prepared. Um, one thing that I want to do differently as well is get maybe a tote that either we can keep on the porch or in the basement, or even uh, you know if we don't want to put it in the basement because it gets dark. Um, if we even want to put it in um, the, um, the Sean's pole barn once it's done so we can just grab it and have it. Uh, last night we had to run into town to get things like um, paper plates and bowls and silverware and all that. And um, if I have it already on hand, it won't be as big of a burden, especially, you know, if, we're, if it's like right now between paychecks and stuff. So... We really did not need to have to go and get all that stuff. So if I have it all prepared, and I have it in a tote for power outage, I could also put things like uh, candles and lighters, maybe some matches. Um, Sean's got a little grill. It's just a little tiny, it's like a, well it's not really a grill, it's a stove, I guess, a little camping stove. Um, and I can grab like a pro, pro, one of those little propane tanks from like Walmart. And I can stick that in there to make sure that we have propane so we can cook. Um, we do have a gas stove that I can with that's on our porch. Um, and the other day Sean was cleaning some brush around the house and accidentally cut through that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we can't use that now. Uh, but that's okay. Well, we're making do. Uh, we're just kind of pretend we're off-grid, kind of, and uh, this is what we would do if we were off-grid. So it's good practice for us, I guess. But, um, yeah, so we're, we're surviving and all that. Um, so I'm, I'm getting better at adulting, but, man, I got a ways to go, I think. But anyway, we have a large family like us, which you know, I'm trying to be prepared. I am also looking into the possibility of um, maybe canning water this winter. When things are a little bit less stressful, I can can several gallons of water. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to do that, so I'm going to have to do some research. I know it can be done. I just have to figure out how to do that. Um, so anyway, I, I just anything I can do to be more prepared because it, it just seems like when we have these big storms, we're out of power for days, almost a week, and um, that's just really hard with the little ones. And uh, you know, we can handle not being showered, although it's hot. It's not bad today, but we're still kind of icky. Um, but, you know, we can't go without water. So those are some things that I am thinking about doing to make these situations a little better. So 
let's go and take a tour of the homestead and see you can see all the damage it's not too terrible as like some people have had but it's going to take us a while to clean it up okay so this is kind of excuse me <clears throat> it's early in the morning there's the kids they're enjoying they're enjoying having all these trees down to be honest um, there's one back here you might be able to kind of see that one the tops kind of fell out of it but this is kind of the start of it and um, this is actually on the west side of our cow pasture there's another tree right here this one was actually over top of um, the cow pasture a little bit and it gave them shade so they lost quite a bit of their shade from that tree when it came down um, one thing that I am extremely grateful for is the fact that it actually everything blew to the west and um, my biggest fear in the morning was that I was gonna have to deal with trying to figure out how to keep the cows in but nothing was on the fence nothing it all blew to the side of the fence and I'll show you in a second how close some of that stuff is now I just showed a picture um, or I, I did a video at the beginning of Sean cutting up some trees. This is actually to our path back to here. Um, he said this is all cut, so the kids and I will probably come back out later and kind of clear some of this up. Um, so the, our path to the cows is actually blocked, so it's a good thing that I've got this path over here. And they're hungry. They might need water too. I'll have to see if I can figure out how to get them some water today. Keep walking. I am really sad about this one. This this broke my heart. I'm kind of mad. <laughs> this is kind of like a garbage tree. It's not really anything. I think that's a um, I think it's a box elder, but I'm not sure. But it's standing, as you can see. This one right here is a maple tree and I am so disappointed on that it just it just cracked it right there just took it over and I'm so disappointed because I like to sit my my herb garden you can see my tires my herb garden is right in here and I would sit under those trees they would provide shade and I'm not entirely sure what this thing is uh, it's got some cool, it just it looks really cool, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and um, it's got these berries, they'll turn purple like this one, let's see, here's a purple one, right here, there's some purple ones, and uh, I don't think they're edible, but they're just really super cool looking trees, and my greenhouse, it didn't get hit by anything, <clears throat> Uh, I would just have to walk around here. I'll have to show you this. This is, oh, this is amazing. My morning glories. Aren't those beautiful? And they're just, they're doing what I wanted them to do, all to the most part. They're just climbing up my trellis and just looking amazing. I just absolutely love morning glories. They're just, just beautiful. So it's kind of nice to come out here and see them. And they didn't sustain any damage. So there's the boys. Well, you can see where that tree is compared to our fence. That could have very easily just landed on our fence. And it didn't. Hi, buddy. I know, we'll get you some breakfast here. Yeah, there it is right there. That's... I am just praising God because I did not have any battery on my phone. I was not expecting what we had going on yesterday. And the brakes of our truck had gone out. So I was trying to figure out how in the world, if that did fall on there, how I was going to get a hold of anybody to come and help me take the tree off so I didn't have cattle running around because you can see that's that road right there that's a busy very busy road and I didn't need I didn't need big cattle running around out there where uh, there's busy cars driving by they didn't need to be dodging cows along with uh, those sticks and things 
So let me take you over and we'll show you the other big prop. Okay, so we're on the other side now of that maple tree that I showed you. It's right here. My potatoes are right here. I'm glad it didn't fall all the way down. So I'll be able to, once we get the power restored, I plan on um, harvesting those and canning those up. But I need power in order to do that. So they're going to have to wait. But they're starting to show some signs of some, some blight and things. So they're going to need to be pulled up rather soon. So... I'm just hoping they'll wait the weekend at least. Okay, so here we go. This is the other side. Um, now some of this damage to this tree was actually done. We had another storm earlier this year and that had fallen down with that. And uh, this last storm really, really did more, even more damage. And I don't know if you'll be able to see. Normally with these trees here, it would be shaded on this side. It usually is shaded on this side of the, these trees until about 11 o'clock so now that these are down like there you go there's a kiddo climbing roots um now that there's no these trees are taken down it's actually shining over here now so this is um actually kind of a good thing sort of now i kind of like these trees just because i could walk between them we had a path and it was kind of just one of those magical things <laughs> like i said the kids are really enjoying having all the trees down and that gives them some place to play and I don't know what she's doing. Now there's a fence row right in there and our house is on the other side of this tree. It's not right on the other side of this tree. Um, but it, it's pretty it's pretty close back there. So yeah. Um Let's see, get out of here. Here's some more. This is more trees. They were just blown to shreds. See, there's the fence. You can see that, and there's grapevines. There's wild grapevines that were covering these trees. So those are that's not helping the whole mess situation. We got this one we're gonna have to do something about because right there we walk underneath here to get out of here so that's probably something that's gonna have to come down rather quickly so yeah that's I think there's more damage into the woods but that's not a big concern to us no, there's more. This is just more of the trees coming down. One of my shoe mocks came down. I hate that. I love these shoe mocks. They are so beautiful with the with the little berry things they've got. And then when they turn in the fall, they're my favorite color of trees in the leaves. Now. You can see this is opened up. This used to have like a canopy that you would walk through this path and all of a sudden you get through the other side and um, it would be like you just entered a different dimension. And I was wanting to really build on that and this is opened up. Um, I could probably put some better trees in there and uh, fill it back up again eventually but it's gonna take a while to clean all this up. In fact, we I don't know if we're gonna wait until a lot of this dies down so we can see what's what. Um, plus my husband is working six days a week. So um, we'll just be hitting this whenever we can. But um, I woke up to at about 6.30 in the morning to what sounded like a freight train just barreling through behind our house. Our house is right behind these other trees right here. Um, and this is, I mean, this is how close this was. And I could hear trees behind here. And I don't know which one of those trees I was hearing. I could have been hearing the one that was um, uprooting. But I woke up to that tree 
um, or a tree cracking with to that howling wind and it was still dark out so I didn't bother looking out to see if there was anything like a tornado or anything or if it was just howling wind but um, that was not something that I really want to experience ever again uh, the kids and I were fine but yeah um, as I came out to here I just I, I was just in shock you know how close this was to the house and I don't know if you can see, but that's a big giant maple, and that is like right next to our house. And the only thing, and there's an oak several feet from it, and then there's another elm, a big, really big elm. And those trees only lost branches. Um, and you can see what this did behind our house. Now these are box elder trees. A lot of the ones that we got destroyed back here are box elders. Uh, and I have found that with those box elders, they don't seem to be as tough as some of the other trees but at the same time it's still kind of a shock that uh, that did happen so close to the house so yeah we have a lot we're gonna have to clean up now I'm kind of glad that that tree did fall over I've been thinking about taking those out eventually um, but wasn't planning on doing it right now and then we can add to our growing space because it would open up even more. Um, plus, like I said, it shades out a lot until 11 o'clock or sometimes later. Um. <laughs> Ouch. This is other. You can see that. I don't know if you can see, but there's the power line. It didn't even. I, it probably grazed it, but it didn't pull it down. So that's kind of an amazing thing as well. This, uh, we don't have to worry about this that power line. The storm that we had no. Was yeah, this one was down for a while. It was a, down from another storm. This uh, Schumann tree. Yeah, you can see in there. The kids are having fun with this tree being down. They're able to climb it. So, yeah. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with right now. And uh, those of you who are dealing with the same things we are right now, we're in there with you. So um, hang in there. <laughs> and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.